Hi, and welcome to Healing Archetypes, presented by the Universal Healing Center in Miami, Florida. Wow. So, how does it feel, you know, just to know that you are a part of a global shift in consciousness, that uh, the gods that be, that the whole universe, that all the invisibles, the, the angels, that everyone uh, is on mission, heal the world. And they have solicited you to be a part of that mission. I don't know about you, but I just really feel very uh, privileged today. I'm excited. I feel like I'm a part of something. I feel like uh, I'm needed. I'm desired. I'm, I'm, I'm called. I don't know. That feels great to me. Okay. The, the only thing that does change is in me, you know, is that it compels me to wake up every morning and, and to ask, what would you have me to do today? Father, universe, God, what would you have me to do today? What is my part in this whole global activity? What is my part? Because I now want to play my part well. I want to do what you would have me to do. And that's where the song, uh, the old song comes that says, um, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. And I really believe what, what the writer was trying to, to get or convey to us was, when will we reach the point where we will truly surrender to God? You know, when will we reach the place where God will not have to fight us in order to get his will in our heart? <laughs> That we ourselves will wake up and say, hey, what is your will, Lord? Let it be in my heart. What is your will, God? I, I seek to do your will. I seek to desire to do your will. I don't know. I feel like that's the place of surrender. Where I desire to desire to do the will of God. I, I just want to fulfill whatever it is God has put me here to do. Starting off with my own life. And then to the lives around, uh, closest around me. How could I be a great friend today? How could I be a great uh, companion today? You know? How could I be a great boyfriend or a great girlfriend today? Or a great husband or a great wife? How, how could I be really great? How could I look at my partner and really enrich their life today? That That's what, you know, I would go on to ask. And then after that, I'll say, well, you know what? How can I really serve this company well? They've given me a job here. They pay me every Friday. How can I be a blessing to this company today? And then it goes on and on and on. Yeah. Well, today's archetype, okay, is a very unique variation of archetype. You know, we're going to talk about the caregiver archetype. And I'm going to call the caregiver archetype the unqualified healer. R really because the caregiver archetype you know, may not come with with big credentials. You know, the caregiver archetype may be just your mother. Uneducated, you know, unpopular, uncool. <laughs> very common, you know, the, the caregiver has a very peculiar healing touch. And I want you to listen to this because this kind of confused me until I, you know, read it again and again and again. And now I get it. The caregiver archetype, okay, or the caregiver person is very, very unique. You see, instead of actually healing pains, wounds, or sufferings, the caregiver finds satisfaction or feels compelled to actually care for the actual person. Do you get it? Instead of getting rid of your pain, instead of being able to uh, rid you of the wound or to totally heal your wound, the, the caregiver kind of looks past the wound and sees the soul or, or the essence of the person and seeks to care for the person even as the person goes through pain or a wound, or a suffering. 
You see, I mentioned earlier that I call the caregiver archetype the the unqualified healer because a lot of times when uh, the gods will call you to be a caregiver, you will feel uh, absolutely unqualified to deal with the actual wound that the person has. You you, you will feel uh, kind of out of place uh, to say you you would feel almost helpless. I, I, I you know I don't know what to do for you. I don't know how to deal with that. I don't even understand a terminology related to your wound or your illness or your sickness. I fully don't get it. But 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 somehow the gods have moved me into your life. And now that I'm here, I feel compelled to help you. The caregiver archetype. I will keep you company after your surgery. Hey, hey, mom, don't don't worry about it. I will fix your lunch for work tomorrow. I, I have no idea how to do your job. I have no idea how to deal with the stress of banking. I, I don't even know numbers, okay? But I will prepare your lunch and make sure that you are comfortable tomorrow while you go through the daily activities of your stressful job. You get it? Uh, uh, babe, come here. I, when you get home at night, don't worry. I will rub your feet because I know at that at that office they drive you crazy. Okay, and, and I could never do the job you do, but what I can do is I could rub your feet and give you comfort as you go through this tough project. The caregiver, someone in our history that that kind of fully embodies the caregiver archetype, was the beloved Mother Teresa. And I, and, and I love, you know, many people forgot about Mother Teresa because obviously she's dead now. But I love Mother Teresa. I love Mother Teresa because, because her, her concern was, hey, let's do what we can to help these orphans. You know, we might not be super rich. We, we might not have all the resources in the world. But let's give what we have. Let's give what we have. As a matter of fact, if you have two dollars and I have two dollars, then, then let's put our two dollars together and let's go down to the store and buy four dollars worth of chicken and let's cut it in three pieces and fry it up and go and feed these people. Let's do what we can do. And speaking on mothers, one of the most underappreciated, underrespected roles in the world is the role of the mother. It, do you realize, for, for most of us, you know, except if you come from a really, let's say, abusive or, uh, you know, let's say a, a strained relationship with your mother that wasn't so pleasant. But, but, you know, the rest of us out there in the world, okay, when something happens to us, the, the first thing we want to know and the first thing we want to say and the first thing that we really require is, hey, call my mother. She's one of the most unqualified people in the world. You know, she knows nothing about medical science. She knows nothing about, you know, if, if I get into a financial situation, hey, where my mom at? You know, if I break my leg, call my mama. Oh, yeah, because we just need our mother present. Her presence, her, 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 her being there, her, her touch, you know, and, and believe it or not, it's really not her touch. It's really just her presence. Her presence says, it's all going to be okay now. And that's the embodiment of the caregiver archetype. That, that the caregiver being present is an antidote for pain or loneliness. I just need the caregiver to be present. Mother, will you be here with me? I'm scared. Mother, will you be here with me because I feel alone? And the caregiver being present now becomes a home remedy for pain and loneliness. No major accreditations, you know. It just works. It just works. And sometimes we can confuse the caregiver archetype with the nurse archetype. And we're not going to do that today. You see, the nurse has certain credentials. The nurse has a certain educational level. The, the nurse has a certain uh, relationship with the doctor. But, but the caregiver, you know, is, 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 is highly unqualified. The caregiver just, just has a relationship with the person. And that relationship gives birth 
to the healing qualities of the caregiver. Now, I, I kind of need to be dramatic, okay? Just to make my point, all right? And for those of you who are, you know, really superstitious, go ahead and cross your fingers because this will never happen. Come on, let's do it together because I'm a little superstitious myself, you know. I got my fingers crossed while I'm telling this story. But anyways, let's say you're driving home from work. And while driving home, you, 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 you know, you get into an accident with one of those big uh, 18-wheeler trucks. Bam! And, 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 you know, they, they... Get your body out the car, you know, and, and they get you to the hospital. But the, the, the sad thing is that now you, you have no feeling from your neck down. The only thing you can do is blink your eyes and look around. Oh, my God. I feel paralyzed. I can't even move my hands. I can't even if I wanted to eat, I couldn't pick up a cup or, or pick up a, a spoon. I'm limited now. And so at that moment, you know, you have great doctors, you may have a great nurse, but, but what you're really looking for is somebody to deal with your soul. Hey, I'm scared. Call my mother. I just need my mother here because I'm panicking. And that's where the caregiver archetype comes into play. Because I know that my mother is going to make sure that I receive the best care. You know, get some of my friends, get them out the room. I don't want them here. I don't trust them enough. I'm limited. And so the caregiver archetype comes with a level of trust. I trust you to do right by me, even though I'm limited right now. The caregiver. Now, that story I told was really dramatic. And most of us will never get into a, you know, a big accident with an 18-wheeler truck and become paralyzed from the neck down. Okay. But... What he calls us to, to, to really look at is, uh, as healers of the world, you know, can we be trusted to really do right by a person who has limitations? You know, if I was put as the caregiver over my cousin's life, okay, will I do right by my cousin? Will I honor his soul even though his body is limited? You know, if he calls for a drink of water, will, will I hurry up and get his water because I know he's thirsty? Or will I, you know, wait a few minutes and finish watching my television show because he can't move. He's stuck on that bed. And to tell you the truth, you know, only thing he could do is fuss. He can't walk. What are you going to do to me? You know, he could wait. You know, will I take on that attitude or will I really look and say, hey, cousin, even though your body is limited, I recognize your soul. I recognize you. I respect you. I honor your soul. And for some of us, you know, we just simply have people in our lives that depend on us. You know, maybe you help your mom out with bills. Does she have to come to you every month and beg you for money? Or, or, or do you honor her and say, hey, you know what? I know that you need this hundred dollars. It's, it's for the light bill. A and you don't have to call me and beg me for it. I I'll give you the hundred dollars. Just remind me. Send me a text, you know. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put it on my calendar so I remember to bring it to you before you have to ask me for it. Honor. And even sometimes you have to be a great caregiver for yourself. If the doctor told you that you're a diabetic, th then give yourself the correct foods. Th don't be sloppy when it comes down to, to, to your needs and, and to your health. It, 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 you know, it's just not, it's not, it's not fair to you. You know, for some of us, you know, we have problems with stress. And you know that you need to take a break. That you need to create a lifestyle infused with moments of prayer and meditation or relaxation. Or even just uh, uh, sleep. But, but, but sometimes we're not a great caregiver for ourselves or a great support system for ourselves. We neglect ourselves. Oh, well. So here's your meditation for today. Grab a pen. I'm going to give you three points to write down. And I want you to think about these points and ask yourself, are these virtues in my life? Because, because, because I can't give to another person that which I don't have. I must first have it for myself. And then I'm able to give it to others. Number one, am I able to recognize a person's limitations and still honor the person? Can I recognize 
even my own limitations and still love myself? Number two, do I offer companionship? Wow, we really don't know the power of companionship. Hey, I heard you were having a difficult time and I just wanted to call and check up on you and let you know I am here. Companionship. And you can offer it to yourself. You know, just the other day, I went and I went for a long walk with myself. Just as a reminder to myself that, you know, if everyone else leaves you alone, or if everyone else turns their back on you, I still got you. And it'll just be us. And I promise to take really good care of you, no matter what. That was me talking to myself, you know. Sounds kind of crazy, but it works for me. Number three. Showing you kindness is my pleasure. Do you make great decisions for yourself? And then pat your own self on the back and say, great job. Yeah. And see, once we have that type of fulfillment in our lives, it will become easier to show kindness to the world around us. I am filled with joy, fulfillment, and kindness. And that which I have, I give to the world. You may not feel qualified, but you are called to be a caregiver. First to yourself and then to those who are called to love. Let your inner caregiver arise. We need your love. We need your kindness.